Right now, we're expecting to learn more details about the murder of a California woman and the illegal immigrant held in connection to her death. A news conference is scheduled for just a few hours from now for Victor Ramirez. Uh, he, along with a second man, are charged with attempted murder in the death of this 64-year-old woman. Those charges could soon be upgraded. Investigators say the men assaulted her and then raped her and that she later died. And so the question now is whether or not she died because of the injuries in this crime. Ramirez, an undocumented immigrant, an illegal immigrant, was arrested last year for another assault. Immigration officials unable to deport him. They say local authorities didn't notify them before releasing Ramirez, but then local authorities have a different story as well. Fred Tisi, former federal prosecutor, joins us. Wendy Patrick, a trial attorney, joining me to discuss this. Obviously not a debate about what a horrendous crime this is Fred, this is confusing, yeah. though, as far as ICE and uh, the, the county that arrested this man. The county said that in the most recent arrest, which happened just a few days before he committed this crime, ICE had not issued a detainer. This is very similar to what we heard out of San Francisco in the murder of Kate Steinle. Right. ICE didn't issue a detainer. Therefore, they didn't have any grounds to hold him. Is that the case? If he's illegally in this country and he's already breaking a crime, uh, committing a crime, then, then why can't they just hold him? Well, well, first of all, it depends on who you believe. And that's part of the problem, Jenna. There's no kind of set process, no national set steps that have to be followed. And interestingly, in this case, I mean, look, the guy's here illegally. Uh, he commits a horrific, horrific crime. But I, I will say this, you know, his underlying arrest was for a misdemeanor battery, and right. then the recent arrest was for possession of a knife. So th the answer to your question is, is that we but need to have But he's here illegally, right? I mean, if, if right. he's arrested, they, they know he's uh, illegally here. So isn't that enough Correct. of a crime to hold him? Well, one would think that it should be, and I think that's the problem. There has to be sheer set guidelines, and it's got to come from the Justice Department, and it's got to come from the White House, who are willing to talk about every cop shooting, but aren't willing to talk about what we need to do to protect Americans from the very small fraction of illegal immigrants who are very dangerous criminals, and you know, that has to be dealt with. Wendy, his criminal record goes back to last year. He assaulted a woman. He was high on meth. The judge in that case, uh, where apparently ICE did issue a detainer, sent him to rehab. Instead of having him in prison, instead of deporting him, he gets out, and then May of this year, this is when the misdemeanor battery that Fred mentioned is committed, and then the misdemeanor weapons charge, and now this. So, who is to blame for this? Yeah, Jenna, let me uh, sort of add some additional points to this discussion. And, and the first one I want to add is the fact that felonies and misdemeanors are treated differently. They trigger for different For a citizen, rules. right? I mean, so that's what when I'm you look at some... Wendy, hold on. For a citizen, they have different rules, but he's not a citizen. So it, why they trigger he... different rules. They right. trigger different rules federally as well. And that's what a lot of, that's what we're seeing in a case like this. This is the reality of recidivism being played out both statewide and federally. And when you look at the kind of holds that can be placed on somebody, um, it does matter. And the, what's interesting about a case like this is we've got at least one of the charges that was reduced from a felony to a misdemeanor. So you've got to look, and we're going to hear a lot more about this at the 1 p.m. press conference, but we're going to be able to hear exactly why or why not different holds were put in place. This is going to be really, I mean, the whole country looks at cases like this for exactly the reasons we're discussing. Should it matter, the argument goes. What somebody is in custody for? Should it matter whether it's a misdemeanor? And you may also well, see laws again, being changed well, I don't in know response. If it, to this. I don't know if it is. A, I mean, I get Wendy's point, Fred, about recidivism, and that's an excellent debate to have, and one that is, we should have right. about our criminal justice system. But again, he's not a citizen. So why is he afforded well, the same sort of rights as a citizen in this country? And why is he continued to be treated in this way, where then he is released and commits other crimes, a horrific one we'll like take this? Take that up with the U.S. The, the answer to your first question is you have to take that up with the United States Supreme Court because they, they made rulings that say that if you're here, you get treated with the same protections as a citizen. Having said that, it, it, yes, it was a misdemeanor, but it was a misdemeanor and a violent offense. It's a battery. That's a violent crime. And so ultimately, the problem here, Jenna, is, is, is that there are no clear-cut guidelines between ICE and local authorities. But what about Separate common sense? This... Wendy, and I'd like to ask you about that because you practice in California. What about just common sense? I mean, so ICE didn't issue the detainer this time, but they issued it last time. Well, well but when, you, when you does the what? county come out and say, hey, ICE, I'm just curious, like, maybe we should hold this guy because, you know, he hasn't had the best record. 
You know, Jenna, it's so easy to look at these cases in retrospect and ask the excellent questions that are being raised in this debate. But in the moment, what we're going to find out more is why not? Why weren't there precautions? Why wasn't there a hold? But you got to remember, there are lots and lots of case law. There are constitutional protections. This is a complicated analysis. Emotions are high. It's a horrible crime. Everybody's angry. But what we're going to now see is really the legalities of why exactly. And this certainly isn't the only case where we're talking about this. Sure. But in every case like this, it's a learning experience for everybody involved, well, and hopefully it'll lead yeah, to the, the changing of the laws to, that are causing this right, debate. But, sure, for while, but, while, but while people are learning, people are dying. So, right. I mean, ultimately, something's got to be done well, quickly it's a, it's and a, effectively. It's a big question. Is the law working for us, or is the law working against us in this? And so that's well, something we're going to be... it's not protecting a lot of its citizens. It's, it's something a we're hot be debate. We'll see what hot happens at this news conference size. in just a few hours. Thank you to you both. A heated conversation, and we look forward to having you back. Thank you.